But paradoxically, sitting here, I thought this would be a, you know, a sort of like a dead zone acoustically. It's fantastic right here. Every decibel of bass excellence costs 100 grand. But we'll have a bass critiquing session uh, later. <laughs> Welcome, my name is Jess Izza and I am joined by multi Grammy Award winning pioneer, producer, performer, just everything in between. I mean, absolute icon of a musician, William Orbit. How are we doing? I like your shoes. <laughs> Thank How you. How are we doing? Extra, extra height. <laughs> The answer is to your question is great to be here in White City House, you know, in this Dolby environment, calibrated musical womb of speakers. There's 20, 36 loudspeakers in here. My mind has just been blown, not just audibly, but visually as well. You've got visuals too. I made my first video, um, <laughs> nearly burnt my house. That was your down. first one? Yeah. Didn't happen overnight, it took a few weeks and it, I, I definitely nearly burnt my house down because it involved fireworks and water tanks and lots of mess. But what happened? What, what, what were you doing? Was it the fireworks? Yeah, I'd get, well I used to do it as a child, but you'd get the fireworks and empty out all the stuff. Now of course these days they're much more potent. Yeah. They're just, you know, they've just got this super explosive stuff. Uh, empty it all out, cut them open and then sort of make these fire sculptures and film it. It's all on screen. Just so many different contrasts in there. Where yeah. do you begin? It's like tripping out, you know. It's, <laughs> it's just it looks great. I like I like to go deep with the music, but I also like sparkly things. I like spark sparkles. I like sparkles. <laughs> there, I said it. But at the same time, there's an awful lot of um, artifice in making it, you know, in, in cutting it, the oil paintings and so forth. So it's a combination of spending a lot of time. And then, then jamming it down as a kind of improv. Yeah. And do you have friends come and dance for you? Yes, I did. Right? I did. I did. I had lots of my girlfriends come over and, yeah, I would put them in front of a screen and we would get the music rolling and just do your thing. Because I love movement. Digital stuff is great, but it can seem very lifeless. It's got to be organic to start with at its yeah. core. And there's nothing better than dancing. I did get the oil paints out for three years of intense painting and did indeed, yes, yes. And has that filtered into it, you think? It's all in there. It's all in there. Mm. I can never differentiate between, you know, colours and form and music and sounds anyway, never. Yeah. This seems to totally, they totally um, merge and without any effort whatsoever. It's natural. Well, I've known Tony McGuinness from, from above and beyond for a long time, over 20 years professionally for Warners and became friends and he always wanted to do music he he would be a, he was a fantastic successful marketing director but he would say confide in me William I just really want to do music I want to do music and he did you know, he made it happen to the point where they, the band is one of my favorite bands above and beyond and it's one of my favorite labels so when I had this re-emergence and this new flowering of what I was doing I was I was really happy that they said we get it William can we Put it out. What was the turning point? What was that moment? Because it's been seven years no, no, since no. the solo project. Seven years and people are so, so happy for your return. We, you know, encountered this incredible artist from the Cayman Islands and she, her songs were just, it started with the songs. I mean, yes, I've, these, are, these are some of the best songs I've ever heard. I started to do a little bit of this and that on the tracks. And at the time I thought I was, I couldn't have any relevant voice in music anymore. I thought it was like it had long gone out of the station and I was just left. You really felt like that? I did, yeah. I couldn't even look at my, my studio. I thought the world was done with me. It's like I thought, I, I can't get any engagement. It seems like I'm an actor walking onto stage and it's silent. How can I possibly perform? How can any artist, you know, breathe, breathe into their kind of like personal psyche? if there's no response, and that's how I felt, pretty, pretty low. Mm. So I, I, I approached it with caution, it's like, I'm not sure, but I'll have a crack, and Carl kept on saying, have a go on, William, get the Pro Tools filed up. And I did, and started to bit by bit get that sense of, well, hey, maybe I'm 
quite good at this. <laughs> you know. And now, you know, so yeah, thanks, Ari, because you kind of got me going. I don't think she even realises it. The current music that's going on, and it's all its kaleidoscope. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I guess you started classically, didn't you? Yeah. And then you went headfirst into electronic. You've managed to so successfully bring them together. Just hard work and diligence, mm. and it's all I can do. So my tip for anybody, find out what you're best at doing, what you love to do, and you could coast along quite happily doing it, and then notch it up and, and make it so you literally almost injure yourself to make it better and better. Don't injure yourself, but do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That there'll be something you can just do that you would naturally do. That's the thing you should be doing, but just ramp up the intensity and the effort, and then you'll get there. You started making the EP, right? So at what point was that? Well, it kind of coalesced out of this kind of cloud of sort of uh, half-formed ideas. And then the thing about Anjuna is they're really good, good ears. So they would come back with critiques, say, you know, and, and they would be quite, quite nitty-gritty sometimes, like perhaps a high cat could hold off for four <laughs> bars, you know, and be like a half a decibel quieter. To there's a sole sweep of the track here where it could possibly kind of, you know, sort of be more and I would, it's, I, I just rejoice in that engagement and I would diligently do the things they were mm. suggesting and it's like, oh, these guys have got great ears. It's That's a lot of trust. It's a lot of trust. It's like authors, right, with editors. Listen to what they're saying. It's after, it's your choice. Mm. But listen, it's all about listening. Do you cook? Mm -mm. It's fine, you've got your studio, they've got their kitchen. I'll cook up bass lines for there you. There you go, cook up the bass line. I feel like that's the best kind of deal. Mm. Yeah, I'll sing for myself. Two of my favourite things. Let's roll the show. Yeah, let's, let's roll, I'm <laughs> getting into it. <laughs> I learned that you and Madonna were 40 when you made Way of Life. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> but that's like, there's so much pressure these days for, I don't know, like Billie Eilish, teenager, Arlo Parks again, like we were talking about a teenager and everyone's so transfixed on, on youth and success. Like, what would you make of that? Just, just have fun with the allure of being young. And then once you that's over, Work out what you're really good at doing and do that to, to, so that it hurts yeah. and you'll be able to keep going. Okay. You know, you'll come back because we felt, I know I, I, both of us felt very youthful. I mean, we felt the energy. Hold a bit back. Keep a bit in reserve. Yeah. It's a long game.